scratch that and just chunk out the features that we have. Oh uh, God, shut the fuck up and stop thinking about stuff. <laughs> So this is the intro to Selena. Selena is a 2016 Crew Cab Tundra. What I did is I'm gonna just go over the basics of this thing. Obviously we've been building on this thing for several months. Um, we're at a hiatus right now working on their stuff. So I figured it's a good time to talk about the basic fundamentals and features uh, that we've already incorporated into the build before we keep going on. And we'll break this thing up. So, you know, today I will just cover uh, you know, the big areas. And what I did is I wrote them on a whiteboard just to kind of stay on track for myself. I just, I've been practicing using whiteboards um, to bring some structure and some order into these courts here. So um, I put together a rough list of stuff I want to cover. Uh, the history with this thing. Um, JP is one of my loyal clients. He's, uh, he's been around for a bit and he's definitely a friend of mine now. Uh, he brought this thing in running form. We actually, we, he drove down, he lives up north uh, in California, drove down. We went to GFO in Camarillo. We picked up some parts in this truck, put them in the bed, put them in the back seat, um, drove it to the shop, backed it in, unloaded the parts, and then put it in its spot and started doing work on it. So, um, just to cover this stuff in no particular order. Um, 2016 Tundra Crew Cab, like we already talked about. JP already had this thing with a Magnuson blower on it, so it is supercharged. I think it does 550 wheel, um, which is pretty good gains for a Tundra. Um, stuff we're stressing. So I'm just gonna, like I said, no particular order. Um, this thing is a shortened wheelbase. It's at 135. Uh, I believe the factory was 145 or 144 or 43. Uh, don't hold me to it, but I know that's close. I know that it's shortened 10 inches. Um, so with this thing with a 40 inch tire on here, when it's bumped, because this thing swings in an arch. So when it goes to bump, it's actually bringing the tire closer to the cab. You have an inch and a half from the cab to the outside of a 40 inch tire. So it's close. Um, reasons for shortening a wheelbase. The whole point of shortening a wheelbase is to get your truck to handle and track better. The sweet spot is like a 124, 126, which is like a lot of trophy trucks. A lot of extra cab pre-runners are 135, um, and they usually have a shortened wheelbase. So getting this thing to 135 is uh, is uh, awesome you know, place to be. I'm not gonna go into too many details, so I'm just gonna cover that. Integration, chassis to frame. Most of the time building your classic frame rail pre-runner, which that's what I'd call this thing. I mean, the majority of this truck is frame rail. So from this point to the front is all frame rail. Uh, I want to do not do traditional, you know, like frame up here, back wall tubes, all landing in one spot, B pillar, and then like a A pillar with some weird shit that like dives into the side of the frame. I wanted to have all of it be, you know, as one, as a chassis. Um, I don't know how to explain that the greatest, but just lacing this thing where all of the structural points make sense and they share the load is, is the name of the game on this thing. And integration also follows like that. That's our key word with this thing. And integration also falls into like the radius arm mounts uh, and the rear trailing arm mounts, it's the same thing. They're all streamlined. So when this thing bottoms out or it bumps, 
it uh, everything's everything's flush. There's no like there's no pivots that are hanging off like little boxes outside the frame or lower than the frame. It's completely streamlined, almost like a Swiss Army knife. When you you know undo a Swiss Army knife, all the attachments come off. Uh, it's the it's the same thing. So we've been incorporating that word into this whole build as much as we can. So rolled cage and two inch construction. The whole chassis is all two inch chromoly tubing. Um, you know, the, the mains, all the main like uprights uh, and like uh, parallel tubes are 120 wall thickness. And then the diagonals and the stringer tubes are, are an 095. So even though it looks big and gnarly, there's a lot of tubing in here that's on a diet just to kind of keep weight down where we can. Um, the other thing we wanted to stress is, is rolling the cage to the actual profile of the cab. So you can see that this cab has like a really, you know, gnarly kind of arch. It's not just a A pillar that goes up and kinks here. It has a big radius flow here. So we rolled all of the upper roof, um, just like the cab. So you can see it just, it follows and it's, you know, you can't fit a finger anywhere. I don't even think you can fit a piece of paper in some of that stuff. Uh, everything has been dynamated. It's dual layers. So it's got um, two, two levels to that dynamat. All the chassis really um, as thought out as I could figure it. I wouldn't say really well thought out, but it's how I figured was optimal. Uh, this will be a true four seater. So it'll be running four Sparco seats, um, plenty of leg room in the rear. The, the, the back section of this cab is, is bigger than like a Ford or, you know, a GM by far. It's, it's, it's got huge leg room, so we can easily fit true four seats in there, not like smaller seats or, you know, close quarters in the back. Um, you know, another big part of this truck is the front um, twin traction beam system. So it is I-beam swap. Uh, we've done extensive work on this thing to facilitate Bronco style I-beams, twin traction beams. It will be four wheel drive, um, manual hubs, electronic engagement with the transfer case. Uh, everything, the beams are Cho beams. We will cover that too, all in detail. Uh, and then we did all custom steering, all custom cross member, beam pivots, radius arm pivots, everything is custom. So uh, that's for later. Traditional four link rear. So this is your standard 55 inch trailing arm. It's not like a crew cab style trailing arm. It's got the shocks closer to center. Uh, and that means shocks in the cab and it means 35 inches of travel, which will probably be like 33. Um, so we're going to, like I said, we'll cover all the details with that stuff. Um, you know, close to a hundred gallon cell, 39 to 40 inch tires. So we can run a 39, uh, like a Baja TA or, you know, a newer 40 inch, like a race tire. Um, big shock package. So three inch coilovers front and rear, four and a half inch piggyback bypass in the front and then a four inch uh, piggyback bypass in the rear, two and a half inch bump stops. Um, that pretty much covers all the hard parts. This is, uh, it's an extensive build. I mean, it, it, I don't know if it looks like that, but there's a lot of details and there's a lot of um, hours into this thing. And it's close as far as being a roller, but it's got a lot of like sheet metal finish work, you know, um, accessory mounting, there's, there's gonna be a couple more episodes and updates to get this thing going. And then we're going to cover this thing all the way from, you know, paint, wiring, um, plumbing it, testing it in the desert, JP going out there, driving it, enjoying it, um, and seeing it off. The only other thing I see on that list right now is just retaining factory components. So, you know, this is, it's a full build as far as a chassis, but the electronics and the powertrain and drivetrain are all Toyota. And I'm not opposed to that, but you know, the classic thing is it seems to, you know, your factory stuff just fails over time. And, and that's why you end up like, if you wanted to do a full build right off the bat, you would have all, you know, aftermarket wiring, you know, you'd have a complete custom harness, custom plumbing, you know, you would do everything from the start. But with this JP really wanted to stress this being, um, you know, a drivable vehicle, daily driver, drive it to Mexico, drive it to Ocotillo. You know, those are hours and hours of highway driving for him. So we're going to have factory dash, factory center console, um, you know, factory shifter. The, the trans is built. The engine is supercharged. 
So we're going to run with the power and the drivetrain that it has. Um, same with all the wiring harness. So we ditched the ABS and the stability control and the track control. But everything else, the AC, the heater, all of the amenities, you know, power windows, power door locks, you know, all those features will still be in this thing and it'll be just like a juiced up Tundra. Um, so that sums up the intro and uh, we'll get more into the details on the next one. Good. Cool. Does that do it?